All right, let's go. We're here at the Aria. It is late o'clock right now. Starting up a session around one, maybe not advised, but there's a few two fives running right now and we're definitely trying to hop into the mix. So gonna grind out these videos, gonna grind out these sessions. We gotta grind back all the punts and poor decisions and bad mistakes that we've made so far in the past. I'm gonna start that here. I think we're gonna play the two five Aria. There's a few tables running. There's a 510 running, but honestly, my confidence in 510 right now isn't amazing for good reason, but we'll see how it goes. Um, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. You know, it's very friendly to do so. Um, it's always much appreciated and helps support the channel. But besides that, we're gonna hop in there and hop into the session. So let's get into hands, let's run it up. We hop into the 2-5 game with a thousand in our stack. First hand in with king eight offsuit on the big blind. There's an onion straddle and this hand becomes a four way limped pot. So $40 in the middle, four ways, the flop comes king, 10, nine, all clubs. Small blind checks, and onto me, I'm just gonna throw out a bet of $30 in this spot, and only the cutoff who limped makes the call. Heads up, the turn is the six of spades. It's essentially a total brick and still with top pair. I'm gonna bet out once again for $85. He thinks for a while, and here he doesn't raise, he only makes the call, so I'm still expecting our top pair is gonna be good here. And when the river is a four, we have one pair, no kicker. I don't think I can do much here besides just checking this one. Don't get a whole lot of value from worse hands and we can induce bluff from missed flush draws. So I check and he does bet out. He sizes up to $250. And given the line that's been taken so far, I think we just have to make the call here as he's not repping a whole lot. So I do toss in a chip for a call. He mucks his hands. So we don't even have to show our top pair and marginal kicker. It is a nice start to the session with this hand. Second hand, Action City now with Ace King offsuit in the hijack. There's an onion straddle and their eye opened it up to $40. Player on the button jams for $116 total. Action back to the straddler who ends up making the call for 116. He has 3,000 in his stack. So here we're playing over $1,000 effective and we're definitely trying to get more money in there as this $116 jam is only 11 big blinds. So I put in a four bet, we're in position. I sized to $375. Back to this big stack player under the gun and he unfortunately folds. So let's just go to a run out and sweat it out with all the dead money in there. The river king looks pretty promising for us. We show our hand with top top and he ends up mucking. So once again, two hands in a row, it's a hot start so far. Next interesting spot, it's a doozy with ace five of diamonds in the big blind. There's an ungun player who limps, a plus one player who raises to $25. Action folds to me and from what I've seen so far at the table, he's definitely solid and probably a pro here. So. Out of position with a very good hand, definitely gonna put in the three bets. I size to $100. The onion limper gets out of the way and folds back onto this plus one player who does not call and does not fold. That leaves only one option, which is a four bet to $225. Well, pretty small sizing. I don't think I can go anywhere right now. A five bet seems a little suicidal out of position, but we're playing super deep and he covers us. So I make the call for 125 more. Let's try to navigate out of this one. The flop comes queen nine five rainbow with one diamond. With bottom pair and top kicker, we have a piece of this board. I check to him and he throws out a bet of $125. Very small one fourth sizing. I am certainly ahead of hands like ace king and could certainly have some good runouts to bluff on. So not gonna go anywhere with bottom pair just yet. I make the call. The turn is the four of diamonds. So this is good. Improved to a flush draw along with our pair. I check and he throws out a bet of $250. Well, given this action and given the stack size that I have with only about $800 in my stack, calling it off doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless I hate money, which what some would say I do, but I hold my breath, we only have one option, and it's an all-in jam. I feel like I'm getting called a lot here, but if we can fold out hands like pocket jacks or tens that can play this way, that would be really, really nice. He doesn't snap call once I announce my all-in, so that's already a win already and definitely good news. He thinks about it for a little bit longer and ultimately puts in the fold. 
Phew, we get this one through and things are still going pretty well in this session so far. In the next spot, we're playing six handed and I have jack nine of clubs on the button. Action folds to me and I'm gonna raise it up to $20. Small bet makes the call and the big blind, the reg from last hand, he puts in the three bet to 120. Given the configuration, this hand definitely playable enough to put in a call for 100 more. The small blind actually comes along and calls as well. So still, three ways the flop comes, king 10 four rainbow with one club. Small blind checks, the big blind puts in a C bet of $125. A little annoying of a spot here because I think we're in position and definitely playing very deep against the big blind player. I think we can peel a turn here one time or maybe even raise. Ultimately, I do end up just making the fold because the small blind player has left to act. So I let this one go and the small blind just snap shoves for $260 total. So at the very least, I gotta give myself a pat on the back for not doing anything here and letting my cards go. Ultimately, the big blind does make the call for just a little bit more. Let's just sweat out a run out for fun. Turn comes the king, river a three, and the small blind shows queen 10 off suit for flopped middle pair, committed his stack to it, and it wins. Scoops the pot, so very interesting to see here. It definitely looks like we're at a fun table. Sticking to the theme of action city in this table, this hand's no different with ace king offsuit in the small blind. The plus one opens to $20. There's one player who makes the call. Then the cutoff player puts in the good old three ball to $100. Facing all this action is pretty nice. Not great that we're out of position, so definitely a mandatory four bet here. This cutoff player has about 1,200 in the stack. The plus one player open to 20 has about 1,000. I think we gotta go for it. So I size up to $300, putting in that cold four ball. And little did you know, the plus one player five bet rips it in for about $955 total. Everyone folds to me and well, I'm not folding now. We're hoping for a flip for $1,000. Let's just gamble and make the call. You wanna be in it? Yeah. The flop it brings us no help but the turn is a magical ace. Let's go. The river is a brick and I show my top pair, top kicker. This player says that he had pocket nines and folds. We scoop this one, winning a thousand dollar flip. Who doesn't like flipping a coin for a thousand dollars? guys, the worst knit I've ever played with in my life. Big time knit. Big time knit. Clearly doesn't watch the fucking videos. But folding is boring. No, knit compared to me, I mean. 76% beat it. Close. For real. Close to that. Here we go. A little while passes, we end up being four shots deep in the table, and let's get into this action hand. We're playing 2-5 with the $10 straddle. I put in that blind race to $20. The player to my left does another blind raise to $40, and the one after that does the blind raise to $80. Playing 2, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80. Who would have thought that's a mouthful, but, but everyone at the table is a few shots in and feeling good, so action folds to the player to my right, and he decides he wants to ship it in blind. $1,000 blind did not look at his cards. And we look down at Jack seven of clubs. Sadly, we're gonna have to let this hand go. The player to my left also folds and now onto this $80 straddler and he goes deep into the tank. Just for the vlog, we get the chance to look at the unknown player's cards and he has king nine of clubs. Somehow found a way to actually have a really good hand here in this spot. I look down at the $80 straddler who's thinking about it for a while, and he's got eight five of hearts. And I think they're both blind here because we're the only people at the table that actually knows what either of them have because they both are looking at their decisions blind. Anyways, we see the $80 straddler end up on a call. Let's go to a runout. 1K ships blind. Can you be more entertained? <laughs> I'm just... You feel... <laughs> Money in the pie. Mm -hmm. Good call. You win. Call. All right. Fuck it. I call. Ouch. Oh my god. How fucked up are you to call there? <laughs> Jesus oh Christ. Christ. No, good, 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 good luck, bro. Thank you. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Oh my god. You want insurance? You want insurance? Ship it. Thank you so much. I love you guys all. Nice one. Nice one. Thanks. Good work. Great luck, Proud Brock of you. Shoulders. Proud of you. It was.
It's been nonstop action at this table so far, and this one's no different with ace jack off suit in the small blind. There's blue player who limps to the button player who raises the $15. He's the one that's been jamming a thousand dollars blind. So uh, we're definitely gonna put in a three bet and size up here to $75. Action folds around to him, and I'm not expecting him to fold for any amount at this point. He makes the call. The flop is 10, nine, four rainbow. Here with absolutely nothing, we bricked it with ace high, still think our hand can be good here, so I see bet $60. He ends up making the call for 60. Let's go to a turn. The turn is a board pairing nine, which is really good for us, so now still even more confident that ace high is good. I throw another bet again to 150. There's a lot of draws on this board that he can be calling with, and he does oblige with another call for 150. The river is now another nine. Trips on the board, and as confident as we were on the turn, we're even more confident now on the river. Now we have the decision to either bet or check. I think the most profitable play here is to check here. I don't think betting accomplishes a whole lot of anything, and against someone who's very prone to bluff, I check this one, and pretty much assuming to call any bet. Well, plan goes out the window because he doesn't make a normal sized bet. He jams his stack, and it's not a small jam. It's $2,400. And now we're facing a $2,400 river jam. It's like 6x the pot, and we have a spot to be in. I was pretty much planning to call any sized bet besides this one. $1,000 seems okay, but $2,400 in a $600 pot is not the most comfortable spot to be in. Ultimately, I go deep into the tank, and if somehow he actually has a full house, like a pair of fours, sometimes even a pair of tens, or somehow the off chance that he has quads, that would be awful. After thinking for a while, I just let this one go, and naturally, he's gonna show us his cards, and it's jack eight for jack high. We had the opportunity to win a massive, massive pot with ace high, couldn't pull the trigger and call, but I think it's pretty difficult to do so facing this size of a jam. We have ace king offsuit on the gun and there's a $10 straddle. So there's a plus one open to 30. Two players make the call for 30. And well, we're in this game. We're definitely gonna put in a three bet. We're out of position. I size to $200. Plus one player tanks for a while and ultimately ends up ripping his stack in there for 954 total. Action folds around to me and you already know I'm not folding this one. We already flipped for $1,000 before with ace king. Let's do it again and win another flip. I call and we both show our cards. It's Jax versus Ace King. Quite the coin flip once again. The flop brings no help, but the turn, bang, comes the ace. The river, Jack. Couldn't even script it any better than that. Really, really unfortunate. Nice hand to this plus one player. Pretty gross to see that suck out and then a re-suck out on the river we lose the 1K flip. What the hell are you saying? Yeah. What the hell are you saying? I mean, to be fair, you did win the last flip. Versus nine. I lost 6K the last, last, last session. This oh, session's yeah. going off the rails when we pick up a seven offsuit in the small blind. There's a button player who limps, the player who's been action so far, and I decided to just raise it up to $100. Action folds around to this button player who limps. He puts in a three bet, a min raise to $200. And yeah, well, like I said, things go off the rails because with a7 offsuit, I'm confident that my ace is ahead. So screw it. I put in the four bet to $700. There's really no explanation that can justify what's going on here besides we're playing table dynamics and I think he's full of it. But I don't expect him to fold ever. So for $500 more, he just makes the call and we're off to a very big pot with a marginal hand. The flop comes king, jack, eight, two hearts. So. This board gives us a whole lot of nothing, but it should hit me more than him. So I throw out a bet of $300, and now he jams his stack in there, covering my 1K-ish stack behind, and for $1,000 left, I guess we can flick in a call with ace high, but I don't think we can do so and defend this spot, so I just fold this one, unfortunately, not seeing a great run out for our hand. And he happily shows us the 10-7 of hearts for 10 high in the flush draw. Not much to do here, I guess. We kind of get owned. For the last interesting hand of the session with king 10 of spades on the button, there's a hijack player who limps. The cutoff to my right raises to $20, and we're not going to call this one. I put in a three bet to $100. 
and only the hijack makes the call. Going to a flop of ace, nine, nine, two spades. We've got the nut flush draw and given the action so far, we're just gonna be committed to it. He checks, I throw out a bet of $125. He puts in a check raise to 500. Well, we don't have that much behind if we call this 500. So let's gamble. Once again, we have the flush draw. Let's try to hit it. I rip it all in and he calls. We certainly need to improve. What are you talking about? The runout comes and gives us no improvement. King high is not going to win it. This player shows ace queen. So unfortunately, our massive stack in the beginning dwindles down to zero. We don't play too many interesting hands after this, but we do end up picking up a few small pots after rebuying in for a little bit. So after this hand, we actually rebuy in, but don't pick up too many interesting spots. We do end up making a little bit of our money back, but off to the outro. Woo. Welcome to DGen Hours. As you can see, the game was ridiculous and it's 6 a.m. 6 in the morning. We played for a while. I think we played for five hours since we started the session at uh, 1 a.m. From the hands, you can see a little splashy, just a little hint of splash. And uh, we thought we would take it easy with playing 2 5, and little did we know, wildness. So we ran it up to like 3K, give or take. We're up like 2,000 at the max. And then uh, things kind of crumbled apart, but all things considered, given the variance, it's not the worst in the world. We're in the game for 4,000, out of it for 3,500. So it's an L of $500, unfortunately, where we were up around 2K at the, at the peak. Things uh, just didn't really go great from there, but all things considered, like I said, uh, what a swingy game. It's literally daylight, the sun is out. We haven't slept, we're gonna go to bed, so. There it is, uh, in for 4K, out for 3,500, in probably the most ridiculous session you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> if you've made it this far, like button, always much appreciated. The subscribe button, always much appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Maybe some more ridiculous shit like this, maybe something more tame in the next video, but we'll bounce back. See you guys next time. Peace.